sense that I talked at the, at the beginning that we're, we're really not trying to work the Course or work spirituality into personal lives. We're willing to practice the presence, we'll say, and open to forgiveness and let everything dissolve and disappear that doesn't have any reality so we can come back to the one truth. The Course says, you know, don't try to bring the truth into the illusion. That would be like taking something that's universal and trying to fit it into human understanding or into personal um, applications when actually if we keep letting go of the persona, the mask, the personality, then that's where we have these revelatory union experiences of knowing that we're it, we're the whole. We've always been the whole, we've never been anything but the whole. So it's, it's that direction of, of going, opening up to the whole and letting go of the fragments. Now, this will, will dissolve every concept, including concepts like reincarnation. Uh, for example, I was here in North Carolina and I was over near Greensboro and there was a gentleman who had the, was it like the, the tuning fork or the tuning sticks mm -hmm. that move and everything. And, and uh, he was asking myself and my traveling friends, you know, if we were interested to know who we were in past lives and you know, all that kind of things, and, and so, you know, for, for me everything's just a background of joining in joy, so we, uh, you know, how many lifetimes we had lived in time and space, 300 and some, 400 and some, were we present back at the time of Jesus, and he told me that I was actually Jesus' half-brother. <laughs> uh, uh, of course he's always talking about, everyone's your brother, everyone's your sister, but I, Half brother. Just had some children before <laughs> getting together with Mary. So half brother. And then, and then Helena, you know, she she asked if she was uh, Mary Magdalene. And uh, he had his fork ready to go, and he was probably hoping to hit you. And he said, "Well, I can do this, but but I already know that my wife Margaret, who's passed away, was Mary Magdalene." <laughs> Just a little, a little pre <laughs> prelude here. We'll try. It. Oh, yeah. Oh, you were Mary Magdalene too. See how the right away, that's like, wait a minute, you can't have, were you or were you, know, there's more than one Mary Magdalene, you know, and this and this. It starts to get your question, which is this idea of, are people really capable of reading each other's minds, or is that just another assumption that there are separate persons, that each have minds of their own, and they have their own private thoughts, and they happen to simultaneously, in the same moment, think of the same thing at the same time. Two people thinking of the same thing at the same time, or reading each other's mind. Whereas the Course will take you back and will say, wait a minute, the reason, you know, that no two people see the same world is because there are no two people. <laughs> Ultimately, there aren't different perspectives, private minds and private thoughts. But, as you're going through the awakening process, the process has to remain relevant to you, as you perceive yourself. So, for example, even with Helen Schuckman and Bill Thetford, who were both research psychologists at Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center, for them, the idea of reincarnation was a stretch. For research psychologists, I mean traditional research psychologists, reincarnation it's a pretty big stretch as it is. And Jesus used that by telling them that they had lived many lifetimes together and that he even said that at one lifetime uh, Helen was a priestess and she had, kill had Bill killed in one of the, one of the lifetimes. <laughs> you remember that from Absence from Felicity and so forth. Mm -hmm. So you see with research psychologists, Jesus is meeting them where their mind can begin to grasp things in a meaningful way. And, and I would say that with parapsychology and paranormal activity and everything, whether we talk about teleporting, whether we talk about remote viewing, whether we talk about telekinesis, you know, all, all the different things that, that are measurable in science, by scientists, you know, parapsychologists and scientists, that's still giving us evidence with a certain group of core assumptions that they're separate people.
with private thoughts, private minds with private thoughts. Mm -hmm. And the Course is taking us way, way, way beyond the belief in private minds and private thoughts. Um, for years, with our communities, we've used expression sessions where people, you know, we don't just sit around and go, okay, there's no private minds and no private thoughts, so if somebody has an emotion, get over it. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not true. No. I'm angry at my husband. No, it's not true. You're not a person. He's not a person. I've never existed. No. That's a, I'm angry. That, no, that's not a real emotion. That's, I'm sorry. No, it's actually the opposite. We're, we're encouraging everyone to come and let their emotions up. To stop denying and repressing the emotions. Get in touch with those emotions. Because there's thoughts underneath, not that they're real thoughts, but they're thoughts underneath. And that's part of the forgiveness process of being taken where you believe you are. And you start washing away assumptions, and washing away more assumptions, and that's how the Holy Spirit works. It's not like, you know, you're given this high truth, and you can't even come close to it. You know, and even when you get kind of close, it, he raises the bar. <laughs> you know, that, that would be cruel. No, it's more that wherever you believe you are, the Spirit filters through and gives you symbols and signs that you can comprehend. And you go, thank you. We were talking about some of those last night. Like, uh, you know, Mary Baker Eddy said, Divine love has always met and will always meet every human need. Isn't that beautiful? To me, that's a beautiful description of divine providence. While you believe you're human, while you believe you have a body, and you are a body, then you're going to have to get signs and symbols that will help you take the next step, and then the next step, and the next step. So that's how it works. Uh, there was a phase in my life, in the parable of David, where I came to the Catskill Mountains, to the foundation for A Course in Miracles, where Ken and Gloria had their little the center there in, in Roscoe, New York, and I was going through a very telepathic phase where suddenly I didn't seem like David was David, it seemed like David was one of these big satellite dishes that picks up everything. You know, those huge dishes they had out in the southwestern United States, it felt like, when did I become a dish? And it's like, I, I would go to course groups, course gatherings, and it was like, it was like a radio, you know, all these channels going, like I was picking up everyone's thoughts. And I think, rrr, 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 it just, and, and I, I could hardly rest because I was picking up every nuance and every thought. And I went to Kentucky to, uh, to do this retreat. And when I first arrived there, I just was picking up everyone's thoughts so strongly that I, I tried to go in the next room and shut the door and rest. And I just couldn't, I couldn't even rest. It was so noisy. It's like, there's so much noise in my mind. Mm -hmm. And eventually I did go up to Roscoe, New York, and I met my friend Dorothy, who was about 58 years old at the time. And she was from England. And she was going through the same telepathic phase as I was at the same time. See how wonderful the Holy Spirit is. Like, I was feeling totally alone, like, oh no, now I'm a dish. <laughs> and this is going to be very dysfunctional very quickly. Will I ever sleep again? And how am I going to enjoy life? I'm picking up all these thoughts. She was going through the same thing, and that was the witness we got. So both of us could join together and start to learn that the deeper lesson was discernment. That we could sink deeper in our mind, and that this chatter that we were picking up was not our real thoughts. We, we couldn't deny that something was, seemed to be happening, but Jesus was saying, no, no, just come with me. We'll go down a little deeper. You'll still be able to pick up thoughts but you won't be impacted by them. You won't be reacting to them. You won't feel tired and fatigued. You still will be able to pick up thoughts, but I'll use it in a helpful way. And some of you remember how Jesus did that in the Bible, you know. He, would, he was in there one time with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the prostitute came in and started to take the oil out and started to use her hair to, to clean his and go put it on his feet, and then all the, the high priests, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees were starting to judge her, you know, as being, oh, he consorts with, look, look who he hangs around with. He, if he knew who she really was, 
He would never let her come in and put oil on his feet. As if they knew who she really was. They were just judging the heck out of her. And he knew their thoughts and he turned it into a teaching uh, lesson in forgiveness. You know, uh, why do you think you can judge this woman? He, he knew her thoughts, he knew their thoughts, and he was in such a place of stillness and transcendence that he could use it to teach forgiveness. And that's what I would say, That's those are all good examples of how you know, our psychic uh, power is desirable. It's really what are they used for? You know, that Jesus was a great example of a good use of psychic abilities. Whereas some get into psychic readings, reading the Akashic Record, you know, picking up thoughts, they turn into fortune tellers to try to make a fortune off of a psychic ability. And if they continue to use the psychic ability, for egoic purposes, sometimes the psychic ability will disappear. They will actually lose the ability because they've misused it so much. Whereas when you give it over to the Holy Spirit, the ability remains with you, but you would only use it to bless, only use it to glorify God. You would never, there would never be any thought of, of using it for personal purposes or personal gain.